Hello and welcome to 3D Print Passion. Today I like to show you the Atlery Genius Pro. Like already existing in the Genius Classic version, there is a little back inside with some tools and with a USB stick, some spare parts, cables, a nozzle, a power cable, and here we see the portal of the 3D printer and I already can see one, two, three improvements to the old one. And here we have the printer base. Uh, the screws are already inside. This will make it much more easier for beginners. So that's, in my opinion, very utterly we like. They make it so easy for beginners uh, to install this printer. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like the old genius, but better than the old genius. So it's really improved on that side. So let's put the portal inside the case. And I like to show you something where you should take care about it. Um, here, there is a little socket and you need to take care about it, that it will be correctly fitted in and will not be destroyed. Yeah, let's quickly fit the screws. Let's start with the difficult part. We need to plug in the wires into the sockets. One, two, three. That's it. It's mounted. Nothing more to do. Okay, as next, I will fit the filament holder. Here we have the whole printer completely mounted. Um, it's finished. It took about a few minutes to mount it completely, to fit everything correctly. It's really so beginner friendly. I absolutely love that kind of fitting and uh, mounting the printing together. It's well constructed. So I know already the genius very well. I have the old genius. Uh, you can see it here. And I really will be interested to see how good this printer will be in my tests. Everything mounted, everything fitted, like already said. I placed already filament inside the nozzle and I also leveled the bed and the offset like described in the manual. Yeah, everything's ready. And let's have a look now to the improvements. We can see here on the set axis a strain relief, which was a weak part of the old genius. And that one is much more improved. Here we have that strain relief also now on the X axis. So that should be also now much more better. Of course, we have the new ABL sensor on the downside of the nozzle. The part which was not improved is the idler arm. This one is still in plastic. Let's have a look to the back side of the printer. We see here an improved cable on the heat bed, much more improved in my opinion. Very often the thermistor cable was broken inside that uh, heat bed cable, also as well as mine one. Um, but the new version is much more better because it's, it cannot crinkle anymore. So I'm very sure that this cable will hold much, much, much longer than the old version. What I also have seen, which was a misimprovement in my opinion, the, the feeds below the printer are now um, out of a plastic material and the old version had a kind of a rubber material. And I think that uh, vibrations now will uh, not so good isolated anymore of, to the table, for example. Um, I think the rubber feeds was better, but we will see it during the tests. Let's have a look to the technical data. The build volume is 220 by 220 by 250 millimeters. It's 99 percent mounted. It have a direct extruder. Uh, it have a 32-bit mainboard, very quiet TMZ drivers. It have a controlled, quiet power adapter. All fans are, in my opinion, quiet at all. 
It have an ABL sensor now. Uh, the heat bed can be heated up until 130 degrees. The nozzle temperature at maximum is 260 degrees. Um, there is a volcano nozzle built in and the heat bed did have 220 volt which can heat up the heat bed in two minutes up to 80 degrees. It have a filament sensor, a good usable touch screen, a synchronized dual set axis, a nice setup improved on a lot of parts in compared to the old genius. A very good point to start with the test print. My first test print was a Benji and this came out pretty well, very nice, uh, but with a little problem on the front of that Benji because there was burnt filament inside the nozzle. I think it was from the QA test and after that burnt plastic came out it never appeared again anymore so I think it's not a general problem it was only yeah like I said some filament rests from the QA test. Also this laser cat looks really pretty nice. You are not able to see any stringings it's beautiful printed and the extruder really showed on that print, in my opinion, uh, how good it can do such things. Also the XY set cube is printed very good. You see the layers are fine and well printed out. Um, let's turn it around and we can see also the uh, top and the bottom layers are absolutely well printed. Nothing to worry about. Let's have a look to the dimensions. It should be 20 by 20 by 20. And we have here 20, 99, and again 20. Very well. Also that long cylinder in race mode printed very well without any wobbles. Of course, it's a 3D print. You can see some layers, but like I said, no wobbles, fine printed. Yeah, this steam I have printed already several times in the past for birthdays and other events. It um, is a part of a rose. And I know really good that not all printers can do that perfect. Also this printer not. Uh, you can see it on that point. Yeah, it's not printed perfect. It's printed okay, but not perfect. Let's have a look to the next print. I printed a uh, baby Yoda with tree support structure and yeah have a look it's really printed beautiful let's see how good the support will disappear from that object and uh, you can see it's very good yeah I will oh, the hand is not so well printed out here but the rest of the print absolute beautiful Looks good. Yeah, next I made a tolerance test and uh, the 0 0.5 tolerance is very well printed. The 0 0.3 is okay. 0 0.25 fixed. You can't move it. It will not work. And with 0 0.2 it's the same. So um, yeah, that's the first thing I don't like on this printer there is the need to calibrate something but I will tell more about that point later. The conclusion. This printer is very beginner friendly. It makes great prints with the standard Cura profile of the Genius Classic. You need only to modify the start code command after G28 um, as next you put in the G29 and start with the print. It's not the perfect profile, but it's a very, very good start to begin. Um, yeah, a beautiful printer. It's very, very quiet. It has an ABL sensor. It makes beautiful prints. It's, uh, it has a direct extruder, which makes it much more easier to print a flexible filament like TPU. It has a very good touch screen. It's easy to mount and it has a very powerful Volcano hot end built in. This makes it much more easier to print also very fast. And I can tell you already, I saw a few points where I like to work on to make it even better. So if you don't like to miss my video to make that printer much more better, 
click on the subscribe button and on the bell to don't miss any new videos about the Genius Pro. One negative thing I have found, it's depending to the extruder itself. Normally I try to calibrate the extruder before I start on the values for flow and uh, flow percentage in Cure. And I do that so that I make and I extrude 100 millimeters in one session. So the problem is that this printer don't like this. It starts to, I think it's around 20 millimeters, it starts to extrude. And after 20 millimeters around, it stops. This is a firmware power meter, which um, should avoid to extrude too much filament without printing. That's okay, of course. But if you like to calibrate the extruder, then there's the issue that makes it even harder for you to have a perfect calibration of that point. So what I will do in one of my next videos is I will do that calibration. I show you in the video how I will do that. If you are interested in buying this, you should check my caption below the video. There is a link to geekbuying.com which have sent me this printer for free to test it and to make a review about it. And in plus, I got a discount code for this printer. And as long you push the link in the caption from geekbuying.com for this printer and put in this discount code, you can get this printer for 244 euros. If you are in Europe, you get it from EU stock uh, without any transport costs. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you find it interesting and you like to see more from me. If you like the video, thanks to give me a thumbs up. Until the next time, I wish you happy printing and see you again in the next video.